How's that? Can you hear? Oh. Okay, now can you hear me? It's too quiet, right? There, how's that? Is that good? Great, hey everyone. David back again with the Oakville Symphony and Oakville Community Classroom for our final installment of the Elements of Music. Before watching this one, make sure you've seen the first four, which are linked in the description below. Sorry about the technical difficulties with the volume. I'm glad we managed to get it sorted. So thanks for your help. But also thanks to Dynamics for fixing the problem. What are dynamics, you say? As luck would have it, dynamics are our final element of music today. By now, you've probably figured out that dynamics are the element of music that describes volume, how loud, or quiet, or strong, or soft music is. Just for a second, I want you to think about all the different ways people speak every day. Let's go Blue Jays. Let's go. Oh no, not again. Boom. Alexander Michael Jones, you get up here and clean your room this instant. Oh. Indoor voice, please, Zachary. Indoor voice. Um, hi, uh, I need to return this overdue library book. It's called How to Be More Responsible. Psst. I ate three entire packages of cheese today. Hey! Who swapped my baby for a basketball? Just like in ordinary life, where we change the volume of our voice to demonstrate our mood, musicians change the volume, or dynamics, of music to communicate subtle shades of emotion. We can think of these degrees of volume as existing along a continuum, kind of like an old-fashioned thermometer. The loudest volume is at the top, and the quietest is at the bottom. Quite often, but not always, musicians choose to use special Italian terms and symbols to represent all the dynamics. Fortissimo is right at the top, indicated with two Fs, and it is very, very loud, like the fans at a ball game. One step down from that is forte, or one F. It actually translates as strong, not loud, but it is still a step quieter than fortissimo. Forte is pretty loud, like your parents calling you to clean your room, but it's not maximum volume. Mezzo forte, or MF, means moderately strong, and it's kind of like the default dynamic, just a decent, regular volume, sort of like our indoor voice at school. Mezzo piano is moderately quiet, like when you're trying not to make a big scene at the library. Piano means pretty darn quiet, like if you're sharing an embarrassing secret you don't want others to hear. And finally, pianissimo is very, very quiet, like when you're worried you might wake up your basketball. This list of dynamics is not complete, however. Sometimes in orchestra music, musicians can be asked to play even louder than fortissimo, with three or even four or more Fs, or to barely play at all, with three or four or even more Ps. Plus, there's an almost infinite range of subtle variations, even in between, say, mezzo forte and forte. And there are even other instructions, like diminuendo, which means to get gradually quieter, or crescendo, which indicates that you should get gradually louder. 
When combined, all the different dynamic indications provide a very complete system that musicians can use to communicate the volume of their musical expression. Listen to this short excerpt from the second movement of Haydn's Symphony No. 94. See if you can recognize his brilliant use of dynamics. How does he vary the volume to increase the interest and suspense? I also have a bonus challenge for you. This symphony has a nickname that describes an emotion you might experience at one point while you're listening. See if you can guess what its nickname is. Wow, did that surprise you? If it did, don't feel bad, because it's actually called the Surprise Symphony. Is that what you guessed? What better demonstration of how masterful use of dynamics can lead the listener on a journey? And all it requires is some carefully planned dynamic indications, sensitive musicians to perform them, and an audience like you to appreciate them. Well. I'm sorry to say we've reached the end of this series of videos all about the elements of music. I know I had so much fun trying to explain it all to you, and I know that my friends from the Oakville Symphony, Heath, Josie, Lorne, Mate, Nancy, Tim, and of course Roberto, had lots of fun too. And I really hope you had fun trying to understand it all. Before I go though, let's just quickly recap all five so you can see how they work together to help us to describe and create some amazing music. We started with rhythm. Rhythm was all about sound in time, the tempo or speed. The meter, which was how it was organized into groups of steady beats called pulsation, and accents, which help us to define that meter. Finally, long and short patterns of sound and silence that create the rhythmic interest. You can always remember that rhythm is what drives you to move and dance to the music. Next up was pitch, which was all about high and low sounds, how music is arranged into sequences of notes through steps, scales, and leaps, and how we combine notes together to create harmony and major and minor tonalities. You can always remember that pitch or melody makes up the tune that you can remember and hum, whistle, sing, or play. Our third element was tone color, which some people call timbre. Tone color referred to the unique quality of sound that helps our ears identify how that sound was produced. In an orchestra, there's a wide range of tone color available from all the different musical instruments in their families, and from the many different techniques that musicians can play on their instruments. You can always remember that tone color is really just the way the sound sounds. Number four was structure, which was all about how music was organized. Absolute music leaves interpretation up to the listener and is organized around emotions, thoughts, and concepts. And program music is based around specific stories, events, or characters. The use of repetition, variation, and new ideas forms the basis of musical structure. Repetition creates familiarity in the listener, and variation creates interest. If you can explain how music repeats and adapts itself to lead the listener on a journey, then you're probably describing structure. And finally today, we learned all about dynamics, which was the volume of the music, how loud or soft it is, and all the shades in between. Dynamics can be adjusted to support the emotional impact of the music by creating a whole extra layer of variation and expression on top of just the rhythm and pitch. If you find yourself using words like loud and soft, then you're talking about dynamics. Well, there you go. It's kind of a lot to remember, isn't it? You can always think of music like a cake, because who doesn't like cake? Maybe the basic layers of cake 
are like the musical structure, and the icing holding the layers together is like the rhythm. The flavor of the cake layers could be the pitch, and the color and texture is like the tone color, and the decorations on top are kind of like the dynamics. When you get all the parts of the recipe just right, you've got some truly delicious music. But leave any of them out, and you might feel like there's something missing. And finally, the last thing I'd like to leave you with is that since I'm here today from the Oakville Symphony, most of what I've been talking about has been grounded in what is known as Western European classical music, which is the tradition of music making that many symphony orchestras are grounded in. It's what I know best, and so it's how I personally have tried to explain it. But this is only one of countless styles and traditions of music making. It's not the only one, and even though I love it, it has no special claim to being the best. The elements of music strive to be as general as possible, so that they can apply to as many different styles and traditions of music making as possible. But not all musicians choose to define them in the same way that I've presented them in these videos. And musicians who are really good in other musical traditions might add their own, or even disagree with some of my choices. And that's okay. I've met so many musicians in my time as a violinist from all walks of life and different lived experiences. And you know what? Even though we didn't always agree on the music, I always respected them, and I always enjoyed making beautiful music with them. I hope that someday you can have that same experience, wherever it ends up happening. Until then, keep rocking, and of course, keep practicing. After all, it's elementary. Oh, wow, that was terrible. I'm so sorry. You know, I, I just wasn't sure how to end it, you know? Um, something funny and memorable. What's that? Yeah, you think we should reshoot that part? Yeah, no, I think so too, Jim. Uh, why don't we talk about, just try and make like a, maybe a joke that's got a little more of this uh, to the elements in it. Oh, oh, wait, what? Wait, are, are you rolling the credits? We can't leave it like that. That was a terrible joke. You know, I, I really think we should try it. Just hang on a second. I think